Hey, how's it going everybody? Aaron Hilliard here, Mushroom Wonderland. And today I'm walking into a forest in late September. And this just happens to be one of the rare old growth stands here in the Puget Sound in Washington State. And uh, it's kind of a micro habitat, not a ton of old growth around anymore, which is pretty sad. It's just crazy how much humans have logged. I mean, logged everything and so uh there's little pockets of old growth usually in preserves or state parks but uh, this just happens to be a little preserve that is kind of a secret squirrel spot and i just love uh, this forest out here and so we're gonna take a hike through this old growth forest and we're gonna see what kind of fungi is growing old growth preserve so just as i come down the trail and start making this video the first mushroom i encounter a whole bunch of Dyer's polypore. And these are used for dyeing clothing. Uh, they make a beautiful green color. And uh, here's a very old mature one. Here's a bit younger of one and an even younger one yet. Um, there's more down here on the trail. We've got another patch of them growing right here. Really beautiful polypore. It's got this kind of white edge on it, sort of a rusty color. And if we look under the cap, just take a piece of that and you can see it's got these pores and concentric rings, kind of a green and a tan color and uh, very cool mushrooms. So if you're into dyeing mushrooms, these are a good one. The Dyer's polypore. Look at this, there's like a huge hemlock and a huge cedar kind of fused together. How unique is that? And just because I've never really talked about this, when I'm hiking alone out here deep in the forest, there is known to be bears down in this area, black bears, but some of the biggest black bears in Washington state live right around here. For me, what do I carry for protection besides just my pocket knife? Well, you got your voice and you can make a lot of noise. You can use a whistle, uh, bells, um, anything to kind of let the bears and the wildlife know that you're here in the woods. Um, that'll often scare off the black bears, but what I'm more concerned about than a black bear is a big cat. They can actually be pretty predatory in this area. So some people carry an air horn and that can help scare a cat, but sometimes these cats will just straight hunt you in the woods and it's not really a tangle I want to get into. So for me personally, I carry a nine millimeter pistol on me when I'm alone out in these woods. I just feel hundred times more secure and also because I'm a photographer so if I can walk quietly and maybe come across some wildlife that I might be able to photograph that would be awesome but you don't want to surprise a bear or a cougar down in these woods for me I do carry a pistol when I'm deep in the woods I am licensed to conceal a weapon even though this is open carry anybody walking by would be able to see that I am protected. All right, this is the second mushroom that we found while walking down here in the woods. And this is known as a sulfur tuft, Hyphaloma fasciculari, something to that effect. More toxic mushrooms growing here in the Pacific Northwest. They like to grow in dead wood like this. There's some bigger ones. They're very kind of yellow and fluorescent. Look at those, so these big yellow fluorescent buggers. That is a sulfur tuft growing on the very same log as these. Are these beautiful Ganoderma aplanatums. Another one up there, these are the artist conchs. There's another video all about these, so check that out. Right here's another kind of conch mushroom. This is the Fomitopsis monsiae, and they very stuck on the log, but also known as the red belted conch, probably the most common mushroom here in the Pacific Northwest. And see these, you can see these growing all over the end of logs and dead trees everywhere. Formerly thought to be Fomitopsis pinnacola, but there was research done 
to determine these are not the same as the European taxonomy. And uh, growing right below them are some little tiny, teeny weeny little guys. Look how little those are. And uh, those are species of Mycena genus mushrooms, clearly cut many, 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 many years ago. It's even got trees growing off of the stump. But uh, still sad nonetheless. Look at all these big old stumps out here. Somebody got through here and was cutting a bunch of trees. Down here, quite a bit more sulfur tuft growing here in the woods, very common. So here's another form of a Fomitopsis species, and this isn't the common red-belted conch. This is a different Fomitopsis species uh, related to the red-belted conch. I think they can grow for a really long time. So here you see these big blobule things on the side of trees. They can grow for years like that. Pretty amazing. Here's some conchs that are just really, really thin. And they kind of take on the coloring of a Fomitopsis monsier, but they're very thin. There's a whole bunch more beautiful sulfur tuft growing all over these logs. They really are a beautiful mushroom, but uh, Definitely do not want to eat those ones. Just came across this log. It's got a bunch of reishi mushroom. Ganoderma organensi. Look like weird apple fritters or something. These ones are fully mature. And they are ready to be picked. So we're going to take these... So we're making a video about medicinal mushrooms. We're gonna harvest these today. But yeah, reishi growing in the Northwest. Ganoderma organensi. Look at how big that bad boy is though. Next to it, give you an idea just how big these native furs could get in the Northwest. But they have been slaughtered and butchered and logged. So I think it imperative that we try to do what we can on an individual and a group level. Try to preserve these big, huge trees like this. It is a glorious grandmother tree. Can't even imagine how many of these smaller fir trees are de descendants or direct children from this huge fir tree. So there's a lot more going on out here in the forest than meets the eye. A lot of people are not even conscious to think about how all of this stuff is connected. The fungi, the trees, all of it's very connected. And these big, huge grandmother trees, they have connections with all of these smaller trees. And they feed them and they warn them of parasites. Once I started to realize that, I saw the forest in a whole different way and I started to really have a lot of love and respect for these trees, these big, huge grandma and mother trees, and then even these younger ones that are really close. This one's really healthy also, very tall. And I would bet that it's a direct descendant from this huge fur over here. Take a look at this over here. This is what I found. And uh, this is either a young agaricon mushroom, or it could be a uh, horse hoof fungus, but they typically only grow on birch trees. And this is a very old, dead coniferous log, probably a fir. And this thing is massive and it's shaped a bit like a look at it. Look at that bad boy. So I actually told Paul Stamets team at Fungi Perfecti about this particular mushroom. They thought it might be a young Garricon. And so I think they came out and took a core sample from the bottom. And I could see it earlier in the season, but this has grown a lot. It's big, spongy, pretty soft surface under here. And so this could be a large young Garricon. Growing here on this big fir log in this old growth forest. It's kind of an exciting discovery. So white spores. And it looks like a big old hoof coming out of the side of this log. This log is so old it even has uh, huckleberries and little trees growing off of it. If you got any ideas as to what this could be, please let me know.
I'm starting to hike way up this hill and I come across this right here and it is a shriveled up little earth star and it has done its duty but you can see the star shape it looks very foreign in nature and uh, I thought it would be just about the right time to come find some growing they're always a really cool mushroom to look at here's one that's a little but uh it is still this here's part of the star so it's lost it's lost its mojo okay i just came across this little patch of little guys and they're pretty kind of gelatinous growing here off of this log and beautiful kind of inrolled margin on it really nice gills right here here's another mushroom growing right out of this log and this is a pluteus species and uh, look at this yeah this is a saprotrophic mushroom growing right out of the log they call these deer mushroom uh, supposedly the deer like to eat them I guess they're edible but uh, I, don't, I don't think they taste very good or otherwise everybody would be eating them so yeah, there's the Pluteus. Kind of a pretty mushroom that grows out here, so. We didn't seem to find a ton of different species of mushrooms out here. It's the end of September. It's been a super long dry summer, so things are just getting started. But here's an idea of some of the mushrooms you could find out here. And it's worth talking about just the beauty and the grandeur of these old growth forests and the importance to conserve them and preserve them. Just happy to be out in the woods starting to rain so i'm gonna wrap this video up so thanks for watching this mindless content video of stumbling through the forest and pointing out mushrooms all right take care everyone